Hello, and welcome to this podcast. Today, it's my pleasure to welcome Marcel Kolaya. MEP Kolaya is first vice president of the Czech Pirate Party and a member and quester of the European Parliament in the Greens EFA group. He is active in the Committee on the Internal Market and Consumer Protection, the Committee on Culture and Education, and the Special Committee on Artificial Intelligence, where he is known as a strong advocate for open technologies, freedom on the internet, independence of media, transparency, and a united Europe. Okay, MEP Kolaya, you know about your challenge, telling us how to fix an element included or omitted in the Media Freedom Act. Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, the Media Freedom Act, uh, from my perspective, is um, a long time coming legislation. Uh, many um, uh, member states, or uh, some member states at least, are uh, falling or have been falling in the press freedom index, such as Greece, uh, Poland, or Hungary. So that proves that we really have a problem in the European Union uh, and we should do something about this. Uh, there is a lot of uh, provisions that I really welcome. Um, the provisions on market concentration, uh, for instance. Um, uh, we could also see in the Central and Eastern Europe uh, where a company called PPF acquired multiple TV stations um, from um, uh, CME uh, in the Czech Republic, Slovakia, Slovenia, Bulgaria, and um, it uh, could have been only uh, investigated from the economic um, um, perspective, which for media is not uh, sufficient. The Media Freedom Act should change that. But where I am worried is uh, the Article 17, um, uh, which um, introduces rules considering moderation of media con content on very large online platforms. And I am really surprised that the European Commission and did not actually provide any justification uh, for this uh, measure. Um, otherwise, everything else is pretty much uh, very well justified in the impact assessment, but this uh, part uh, has not been. Uh, we had a discussion on a very similar um, um, measure or provision already during the uh, Digital Services uh, Act uh negotiations and there the co-legislators have agreed not to actually uh put uh, such a measure there so um in in my opinion uh, the article 17 is really not justified and uh, where the problem lies the problem lies uh, in the fact that the platforms would uh, basically um have to uphold the content from from media uh, so basically, media would get some beneficial uh, treatment. Um, that is problematic, uh, for instance, from uh, the perspective of uh, uh, disinformation, uh, because um, if um, disinformation sites self-declare themselves as media, uh, then it would be uh, very difficult uh, to take their content down. Um, we have seen from co-legislators even attempts that I find completely scary uh, to um, change the wording and even uh, make uh, such obligation for platform stricter, uh, even for content which is not, not in compliance with uh, terms uh, and uh, conditions. And we have seen um, also in light of the uh, Team Jorge revelation that uh, disinformation creators also adapt to the um, um, to uh, an ever evolving digital environment, and they are uh, now trying to put content uh, in um, this information content into relevant uh, media that happened, for instance, to BFM uh, TV, and then subsequently it is used in another part of the world uh, as justification for some uh, sort of disinformation. So, uh, in uh, my opinion. Um, Article 17 with these provisions is very problematic, very dangerous, and um, uh, from my perspective, doesn't have a place in the legislation. Um, thank you, Amy Picolai. I think that's a, that's a very strong message. And, and as you point out, um, the fact that self-declaration is the motor, the engine behind Article 17 
creates a loophole, obviously, for bad actors to self-declare. Uh, and with the, the European uh, Union fighting hard against disinformation, and I think doing a lot of attempts to uh, control disinformation, it would be a pity to see that happen. I also note your point that the media exemption, as it was called back then, has been pushed back uh, during Digital Services Act discussions because it was seen as creating a loophole and, and uh, you know, having uh, not been studied enough in terms of its impact. Uh, and as you say now with the European Media Freedom Act, there is no real study of impact either of Article 17 that would allow uh, us to know what the damage could be of, of that article. You have a lot of work in front of you. As you said, your co-legislators are being very creative on Article 17 by introducing deadlines and by, you know, uh, making it, um, I would say, even more um, strict in terms of the upholding of content, as you pointed out. So uh, good luck. Uh, as you know, civil society also has concerns on this issue because of the same rationale that you pointed out. Um, you know, this information comes from media players albeit not always legitimate media players. Um, uh, so uh, the fight has just started, but on a positive note, and to close this podcast, it is true that the European Media Freedom Act is really needed, and we hope that something constructive and positive will come out for uh, media freedom in Europe. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the invitation.